Hey, my dear data friends, it's Nicola from Data Motor. Have you ever wondered which analytical engine in Microsoft Fabric should be your choice? In which scenarios to use an event house versus lake house versus warehouse? Or maybe what is the best possible scenario for using SQL database in Fabric versus a warehouse? In this video, I'll try to provide as many answers to these questions as possible and introduce a few common scenarios uh, and uh, requirements when choosing one solution versus the other may have a big impact on your uh, entire Microsoft Fabric architecture. Let's jump in and see when to use Event House, Lake House or Warehouse in Microsoft Fabric. Microsoft Fabric is all about the options. The same task can be completed in multiple different ways. And it doesn't necessarily mean that one way is better than the other. Sometimes it boils down to skill set of the individuals in your organization performing the data task or maybe a personal preference. However, sometimes these decisions might have a larger impact on the entire data platform workload. Hence, it is of paramount importance to understand the implications of choosing option A versus option B. For example, to complete task XYZ in Microsoft Fabric. All Microsoft Fabric roads lead to one lake. We already know that mantra. However, which road is right for us? Should we pick a lake house, a warehouse or maybe an event house for storing data in one lake? There are numerous factors to take into account, so let's explore three that I consider most relevant. Before that, if you're not sure what lake house warehouse and event house are, please refer to the special Microsoft Fabric The Definitive Guide video on my YouTube channel. We'll also talk about how warehouse compares to a SQL database for people who are proficient with writing T-SQL and want to leverage their skills inside Microsoft Fabric. Let's explore three factors that I consider most relevant. Data volume, supported data formats and supported programming languages. Let's first talk about the data volume. Although there is no single number that differentiates small and big data, and you'll probably find dozens of opinions in the various resources on the web or other videos here, we often refer to big data as an extremely large and diverse collection of data that continuously grows over time. However, for the sake of setting boundaries when making decisions, we will consider big data anything above 5 terabytes of stored data and 100 plus gigabytes of ingested data per day. When choosing the optimal analytical engine in Microsoft Fabric, there is no such thing as the minimum amount of data suitable for warehouse versus layhouse, or vice versa. In theory, you can store only a few records of data in any of the analytical stores in Fabric, but you'll start reaping the benefits of massively parallel processing, or MPP architectures, which are implemented in both Fabric layhouse and warehouse with large amounts of data only. To wrap up, data volume shouldn't be the determining factor when deciding which analytical engine to use, as each lake house, warehouse and event house scales to support petabytes of data if necessary. When choosing a storage option in one lake, you'll need to first consider the data format. The table you see depicts supported data formats in the three fabric analytical storages. As you can see, both lake house and event house support all data formats. So the fair question would be, when should I use a lake house over an event house? The short answer is, whenever you need to handle any type of streaming or event-based data, choose an event house. A few examples of event-based data are telemetry and log data, time series, data collected from IoT devices and so on. Of course, the long answer to the question about layhouse versus event house is more nuanced and depends on numerous factors, such as using data downstream. For example, if you're using direct lake mode for Power BI semantic models, data must be available in delta format, which is not the case in the event house. Optimizing storage cost. Generally speaking, storage is more expensive for event house than for lake house. Since event houses uses one lake cache storage, for providing the fastest query response times at an additional cost. Processing streaming data. Event house is optimized for processing streaming data, 
where indexing and partitioning happen automatically. While processing streaming data using a lakehouse will force the creation of multiple small parquet files that must be vacuumed and optimized later, which can lead to increased capacity unit consumption. Let's now examine how supported programming languages might affect the storage choice. This is undoubtedly one of the key factors when making a decision, not only about the analytical engine, but also when designing the entire fabric architecture. The reason is obvious. Let's imagine that the entire data team in your organization consists of hardcore T-SQL developers. Would you force them to learn another programming language, like Python for example? Or would you rather choose a fabric component that plays to their strength? The table on the screen shows supported programming languages for both read and write operations. Let's stop for a moment and examine the importance of the selection you make based on this information. Imagine that you are implementing a medallion design pattern in Microsoft Fabric. In accordance with the recommended practice of building a star schema dimensional model in the final layer, you would need to apply various data transformations to implement business rules and logic. Hence, if your data engineers or analytics engineers are feeling comfortable writing T-SQL, you should probably choose a warehouse for this layer, since T-SQL can't be used for inserting, updating or deleting the data in the lake house and or event house. On the flip side, if the majority of the data team is proficient with Python or any language that can be used to manipulate the data using the Spark engine, you would probably go all the way with the lake house. Although, in full honesty, the road between the T-SQL and Spark SQL is not that long, in case you plan to leverage SQL skills while using the lake house. Now, things become more complex. What if I choose the lake house for my silver layer, and then the warehouse for the gold layer? Can I combine the data from both the lake house and the warehouse? This is a very common question asked by data professionals considering or already using Microsoft Fabric. Hence, in this table, you'll find an overview of the inter interoperability between various analytical engines in Fabric. Based on all of the aforementioned criteria and typical analytical requirements, I identified a few common scenarios you might face when deciding with which Fabric component to pick for the particular use case. The table you see illustrates the level of suitability of each analytical engine for the scenario and the scope. A 5-star rating means that the particular engine is a good fit for the specific use case. A 3-star rating means that the required scenario may be accomplished by using the particular analytical engine, but with some limitations or considerations. Finally, a 1-star rating means that I don't recommend using the particular engine for that specific use case. For the sake of clarity, I would like to provide a brief overview of each of the scenarios. Operational reports with low data latency. Emphasis is on providing low latency and high concurrency for small to medium volumes of structured data. Enterprise data warehousing. Emphasis is on providing scalability for storing and analyzing medium to high volumes of structured, semi-structured or unstructured data. Implement a medallion design pattern refers to a design pattern where data goes through multiple layers, usually bronze, silver and gold, on its way from the ingestion to consumption ready. In real life, there are dozens of scenarios where a medallion pattern is implemented by combining multiple analytical engines. One of the most common implementation methods is leveraging the lay house for the bronze and silver layers and the warehouse for the gold layer. Of course, this is not set in stone, and depending on the specific use case, you may use a lay house only or warehouse only approach when implementing a medallion pattern. On the flip side, the event house would be a good fit when implementing a medallion pattern for the streaming data. Implement data marts. Emphasis is on providing efficient analytical capabilities for structured data as a subset of an enterprise data warehouse focused on a particular line of business, department, or subject area. Real-time analytics. Emphasis is on providing efficient processing and analytical capabilities for the data as soon as it becomes available. In streaming data scenarios, an event house is the most obvious choice, 
although you might also pick a lake house in some cases where query concurrency is not a concern. Handling arbitrary unstructured data A lake house is a no-brainer here because of its support for all data types. Let's wrap up this part with a high-level decision tree for the analytical storage engine. Please keep in mind that it shows a simplified overview based on the common scenarios we previously examined, and it's by no means definitive guidance when choosing the optimal analytical engine. In addition, I would also like to emphasize that combining multiple engines should be an option when you need to incorporate diverse analytical workloads across the data platform. So the first question you should ask yourself, do I have a streaming data? If you answered yes to this question, then if you are dealing with real-time analytics or time series analysis data, you should use an event house. If you answer no to the real-time analytics or time series analysis type of data, then you are good to go with the lake house. If you don't work with streaming data, the next differentiator is a data format. If we talk about a semi-structured or unstructured data, then the lake house is the obvious option. But if we talk about the structured data, then we have some additional parameters to evaluate. The first one, and probably the most important, is preferred skill set. If most of your developers are working with PySpark or Spark SQL, meaning using Spark architecture, you should go with the lake house. On the flip side, if the T-SQL is the language of choice for your data team, then the warehouse is the obvious option. Another common question about storing options in Fabric comes from people proficient in using the T-SQL language. There are two Fabric items that support the so-called CRUD or Create, Read, Update and Delete set of operations using T-SQL, Fabric Warehouse and SQL Database in Fabric. Therefore, the fair question would be when and why to choose one over the other. I have prepared another high-level decision tree to help you pick the right tool for the job. So, if we talk about the frequent data write requirements, SQL database should be your default choice. If we talk about specific features, like having constraints or alter table statement available, then you should go again with SQL database. In addition, if you are writing highly selective queries, SQL database is better option than the warehouse. Last but not least, in case you need to write a query that aggregates large amounts of data and performing aggregate functions over large amounts of data, then for that, warehouse, for that scenario, warehouse is more suitable. Although, if I need to summarize the key difference between these two, or let's say use case for each of these two, I would say SQL database in Fabric is suitable for OLTP workloads, whereas a Fabric warehouse is a good fit for all up scenarios. That was all, thank you for watching this video and please make sure to subscribe to Data Mozart YouTube channel and stay up to date with latest Microsoft Fabric and Power BI features. See you soon!